Hello. It's Sunday. Who's awake? So as you know, um, we have decided to start a weekly live stream called Wigging Out. We're, uh, weekly with Wigs for Heroes in collaboration with Hair to Wear. And I'm just going to get Amanda on now um, to join us. So thank you guys for joining us this morning. It's Sunday. The sun's out in London. I hope that everyone's feeling good. It's been a really emotional couple of days. <laughs> Hi, Amanda. Hi. Hi. And where are you joining us from? I've come to the salon. I thought it'd be easier. Awesome. I've left a very manic household with a new puppy and everything else. So I thought it'd be a bit calmer to come into the salon. I thought we were going to see the puppy. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. So everybody, this is Amanda. Hi, Amanda, nice to this you. is everybody. So do you want to just you. introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are and what we're going to be doing? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Um, I'm Amanda from Hair to Wear. So we're a wig salon based in Hertfordshire. Um, we work with lots of different hospitals throughout Hertfordshire, Essex, London. Um, we're actually the NHS supplier for 11 hospitals. Um, so lots of you can come to us and you'll get your wig through us going through treatment. Um, a bit of history about me. I've actually got alopecia, so I lost all my hair uh, as a child. Um, so I've been wearing wigs for 27 years eyebrows lashes the lot so for me it's very personal as well because yeah. obviously I've, I've obviously not been on the chemotherapy journey but with the alopecia side I know what it's like to wear a wig having to wear it all the time yeah. and all the feelings and emotions that come with it as well as I've just got to stick a wig on my head there's so much more to it oh absolutely um, so yeah so that's me so it's really nice to meet you so um, we've got an amazing team. I've got a team of nine that work here at Hair to Wear. Um, they're all amazing. And that's from hairdressers to beauticians, semi-makeup um, semi artists, um, lots of us. And we're a nice team that come together. We've all got different skills, which is awesome. So yeah. we've all got our good bits. Um, and we're in our 20th year this year. So we're, we're going stronger and stronger all the time. And it was actually your mum that um, opened the salon, didn't you? Yeah, so 20 years ago, well, 27 years ago, when I first lost my hair, we done the trawl of going around lots of different wig salons um, throughout everywhere, actually. And many a time I came out in floods of tears, embarrassed, um, oh felt that the wigs looked wiggy. I just had some really negative experiences. Um, I had some amazing ones, too, so I can't sit here and say it was all bad. We actually worked with Trenko, um, who are one of our suppliers yeah. and one of our educators. I used to go down to their... Brighton salon to get my own wigs and it was them that helped kind of gave my mum the idea if you like they will okay. do it give it a go um so 20 years ago it started just her on her own in a really small shop yeah. and then like I say now we've got the luxury of moving into a beautiful salon with nine members of staff and just going from strength to strength um and so yeah without her doing that and us going on that journey 27 years ago we it kind of gave us the ammo if you like to get where yeah we were. Okay, definitely didn't... and obviously I met you three years ago I know. Um, for anyone who doesn't know when I had my big idea of um of helping the women at North Mid, I came to see you, didn't I? And I had my bluish grey Gandalf wig on. Um, and, and it was just an idea at the time, talking about- We just about... sat there over a coffee, didn't we? Having a good old yeah, chat. I was there for hours. I know. Looking I remember at all thinking, the wigs. You were so inspirational and you had so much energy and you were like, <laughs> this is what I want to do. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So um, yeah, it's amazing that you're here Carrying now. it on. And now we're working in. together, obviously. And we'll, we'll go into more about the grant side of things at a later date. Absolutely. But um, yeah, so myself, uh, Wigs for Heroes, and Amanda's Hair to Wear um, are, are, will be collaborating in future with, um, with the grant side of things. So yeah, we'll give you all the details when that launches, hopefully before the end of the year. Um, but for now, we so are obviously, we've decided to, to start this weekly sort of show, if you like, um, because not only will it air live to everybody who can join in on the conversation. So you guys at home who have had experiences of losing your hair or you're about to go on the journey of chemotherapy and ultimately may lose your hair. This is for you. This is for you to join in and ask, in and ask any questions that you want. 
And yeah. again, it will be saved on our IGTV. So anyone can go back to any episode they want later on. We're obviously making the, the most out of this whole COVID situation, yeah. aren't we? And, we and are. still trying to maintain that support for everybody. Um, just because we can't see you in person, it doesn't mean there isn't ways that, especially Amanda has been helping yeah. um, all, all of her clients and patients and service users and whatnot. So um, yeah, there's, there's some topics that we're going to cover over the next couple of weeks. Um, but today we're going to be mainly talking about how to deal with hair loss, what to expect when you lose your hair, mm -hmm. um, things you can do to prepare and things you might need. Um, so obviously you guys know about my experience with losing my hair and then keeping my hair with cold capping. Uh, Amanda's uh, obviously just explained to you guys about her alopecia that she's basically like you can't even tell that you're oh, you've got you. you've got a wig on I'll, I'll or that you've got though. eyebrows <laughs> going on. Yeah, so our eyebrows, we've got, I've worked with Suki, who's our semi-permanent makeup artist. Oh, did you so, have yours micro? Yeah, mine are, mine are tattoo, my eyeliner's done as well. Um, without them, honestly, I didn't, I, obviously I lost my hair as a child, so I couldn't have them done until I was 17, because legally you can't. Ooh, so I did have to go from 14 to 17 drawing these eyebrows. Wow. Up, and I found that really hard, as where now, obviously, I've got the semi-permanent brows. I have them topped up every sort of six months to nine months, and they're just always there, and they just, I love them, actually. I couldn't yeah, be that. I couldn't imagine life without them. They're definitely, <laughs> and a lot of ladies, it's so important because you you kind of forget about this. And I think so oh, many people yeah. say that they say, "Oh my god, I never thought about my lashes or my brows. Yeah. Where did you go from that?" But um, yeah. I think it's great. I think what's great you were saying earlier about us working together is we've both come in from different angles, which is amazing. Obviously, you've been yeah. on that yourself. I'm talking to these ladies every day and taking in that experience. So it just feels, I feel really grateful that you've, you've done this, Kaz, to be able to help so many people. Listen, I'm sure. Don't feel confident to come forward or, or ask these things in person. So it's I great. mean, it's really important to, as much as there is so much information out there, um, I think we have to be realistic. It is overwhelming. Absolutely. It is overwhelming. Absolutely. And if we can sort of have like our own everything under one roof yeah. um, and friends of heroes like I said you know they can they can all sort of come to one place and if there's anything that they want from us we can try and cater to everyone um, yeah. because like you know anyway North Middlesex Hospital and Haringey Borough the services are, are quite poorly actually when it comes to cancer care and whatnot so it's our goal and we're starting yeah. today so let's get cracking let's get going. Really <laughs> i haven't got any theme music guys so let's let's start talking about yeah, how yeah. to deal with hair loss first of Brilliant. all okay um because like you said you you came from a different angle on yeah but you had you had to experience hair loss um that would be permanent that yeah. that wouldn't grow back Mm -hmm. I mean, as a child, what was like? What was that like for you to hear that? Like, did you understand what was no, going on? Or I mean, like I say, I've had it twenty-seven years, and I lost my hair really rapidly. I actually lost mine due to I had a severe anaphylactic reaction, and the shock to my body made all my hair fall out. My whole oh body. my god! Yeah, within two weeks, so it was completely insane. I went in for a minor operation. I came out with no hair, and this huge trauma as a child. So it completely flipped wow. my life as a person. Um, and then I spent many years living in denial, saying it will come back, I'll be okay, you know, this is really short term. Um, and it took me a long time to kind of accept it and say, actually, this is part of you, this is something you've yeah. got to do. And you either stay in denial and get angry with it, or you embrace it and you, you welcome it and you deal with it the best you can. And I think when that happens and you feel organised and you're, you're sort of one step ahead, you're so much more in control. And I, I say that all the time. And I think that's with yeah. any hair loss. I think the biggest guilt, certainly of ladies going through chemotherapy, and I hear it every single day, is I don't want to be vain. I'm worried that this is vanity. My attitude is absolutely not. Because no. whoever thinks that, they've never lost their hair. They've never walked down the street feeling that isolated and, and being labelled, if you like. Yeah. Um, our hair is part of us. People see yeah. it. You know, We want to yeah. browse around Tesco's and not get a second look. We want to be able to walk down the street and just feel comfortable in our own skin and I think with 
with hair loss, having a wig or whatever it is that we can do to enhance that is just making you feel like a better version of you. It's yeah. not about the glamour. It's not about changing your look. It's That's just right. keeping you looking like you, feeling like you, and being able to carry on with however long or short your journey is and being comfortable in your own skin. And I think once you get there, yeah. for me, the biggest compliment, so when I get phone calls, nobody's, nobody's realised, Amanda, that I'm wearing a wig. Um, everybody Aww. thinks my hair. Um, I feel so good. It just, it just, and and that's what it is. It's it's feeling, it's feeling good. Um, someone yeah. just said, yes, being one step ahead is crucial. So true, what you're saying. It's not vanity, and and that's, that's right. It's like when I was diagnosed. I was saying this the other day. If anyone tuned in on the scalp calling, mm. um, I initially refused chemotherapy. I don't. Obviously, I don't know why, but I did. You know, I yeah, I just so couldn't cope with the 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 picture of myself with no hair because my yeah. hair was part of me um just like my arm is you know um you're, you spend you, your youth almost f finding who you are you yeah. know as a little girl or a little boy or whatever you know you're you play with styles and eventually you find oh this is this is my hairstyle i like or these are the styles i like this really goes with that dress believe it or not your hair is almost like an accessory as well yeah. I, I found that, I don't know if anyone else who's watching, I found that my style completely changed when I lost my hair. Mm. Um, so wearing wigs, I, I was able to wear anything. That was the good thing about wearing wigs for me. I could pull off any look. But yeah. having no hair, which I did, I rocked the board sometimes. It just was difficult to feel feminine sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know it sounds stupid, but when you've got no eyebrows, no lashes and no hair you just don't feel that feminine anymore. Well, I think you um, see something else looking back because obviously you lose the facial hair as well and, you know, yeah. and, and there's so much more to it. And I think you look in the mirror and you see that reflection and you think, I don't know who she is. And it, yeah. I think it's the hardest bit. And I think what we spend most of our time doing is working on that and working on the inside. And, you know, what I always say is get organised, um, Get your wig in preparation if you're going down that road. Start wearing it. Start looking in the mirror at yourself. Start accepting what's happening and completely be in control on your journey. Because yeah. the people that I meet that are one step ahead just deal with it so differently. Um, yeah. And I think that's the amazing part about us working together and people coming in as soon as they can. We don't wait till hair loss has happened. Yeah. Not, because the most important thing, as soon as you get diagnosed, as you know, you get overloaded with information. Oh, and yeah. Even, it's, even it's, if they... It's just too much. Absolutely. And a lot of people, they might say, oh, have you thought about wearing a wig? And they think, oh, I can't even go down that road. What, I'm going to lose my hair? Um, yeah. And that's why a lot of people, they, they sort of don't get prepared for it. Because, I mean, every, again, everyone's cancer diagnosis is different. Some people mm -hmm. literally will get diagnosed tomorrow and they start chemo the next day. So they've got no time to prepare. Others, you know, like myself, I had about eight weeks before starting chemo because I went through the yeah. whole fertility um treatment and stuff like that you know freezing eggs and embryos and whatever so i had that period to a get my head around it the whole thing including losing my hair so i had time to process it um and one thing i'd say is talk about it say it out loud yeah. because it's almost unbelievable that it's going to happen to you and again everyone's different so uh, you know they might have a period of six months where they're completely you know they're bald and they've got no hair and then you know your treatment's over it normally takes around for some breast cancer patients anyways it's that that sort of time others are on sort of chemo for life so they'll experience thinning hair um absolutely for a really long time so yeah. what we're going to sort of talk about is dealing with losing your hair um yeah. dealing with thinning hair as well um because you could have your eyebrows completely gone but you've also got your head of hair it's like there's so yeah. many elements to it absolutely um and again this is why i want thing is what we always say is just get on the phone you know or that's if you don't right have email us whatsapp us whatever works yeah because i promise we've 20 years experience behind us we've heard the story and we're so close with all our hospitals as well and obviously yeah. i've got absolute luxury of working with dermatology with myself yeah. I, I have to see them um yeah. and we pick up so we're so educated on hair loss and what to expect so yeah. as well as being hairdressers and hair loss educators we we're constantly learning so it may be that we've picked up some amazing tips through nurses that have trained us whether it's like say dermatology whether it's the wig educators that we meet um we're going to have some amazing um 
you know, information to share with you. And that's what it's all about. It's just sharing. Yeah. And I think that's what we've said from the first meeting, that you just need to share that around. There's no, we're going to keep this to ourselves or yeah. we're competing against this person. It's we're here to help you. We're yeah. going to give every single bit of advice we can. And let's get you through it. Let's yeah. Get so I, I'd definitely it. say um, try, and, try and book, like, as hard as it may be, is try and prioritise as well like what's important to you what's important in terms of what you you're trying to deal with mentally yes talk about it with your friends and your family because hair loss isn't just a shot for you it's a shot for the people around you as well children children's usually a big one the children well. women yeah. are probably more nervous sometimes about how their children react rather than themselves yeah. you know because we do as mothers i think that's that's natural feeling yeah. um but my advice 100 percent, is come in and see us what we will do during your first consultation yes we're going to talk about hair and we're going to talk about wigs and we're going to go down there and generally we have a laugh it's not you know we don't take it all very seriously exactly we will have a laugh and a joke with you and we'll enjoy it and we ask you to bring someone with you that you trust you know that's going to give you their true opinion um but most importantly right at the beginning we're going to tell you what to what is going to happen and what to do about it um because that is the scary part and for me when i meet somebody later on that's maybe experienced the hair loss on their own yeah. kind of gone on google and got all them horrendous stories and everything yeah. else they're in such a worse position than i think somebody maybe that's picked up the phone or come in for initial consultation really early on the amount of people that apologize oh, i'm really sorry i haven't lost my hair yet am i okay to come and see you i'm like yes absolutely i want to see you i want to get ready now let's yeah. get prepared let's get you sorted um because you feel a lot more comfortable i think when ladies come in later on they kind of end up panic buying and they're not in the right place and they're, yeah. they're i've scared. heard i've heard that yeah i've heard I've that, that from a few people, people. I always say get in really early so i'll explain to you what we kind of advise and why we we do you know the little things and tips and tricks that we say really early on so yeah the, the first tip i say obviously That's as good. you know when the hair starts coming out you kind of get a bit of a tingle i don't know if you've got like yes a... my my head felt like it was bruised but yeah okay but so i can my... feel that tingle as well it's almost like when you get shivers like yeah. Yeah. chills it's like that on your scalp yeah mine feels like mild burning you know so i think we've all probably witnessed it at the moment where you sat out in the sun that little bit too long and you come in you get out the shower and you touch your skin and it's just it's warm and it's a bit tender, tender yeah i get that feeling on my scalp so all these kind of feelings are are normal um yeah. and that is the hair follicle coming out of the skin which we've never experienced before and unless you've got you know chemotherapy alopecia you're not going to so that is a really normal feeling um so we've just got to be aware and the scalp can get quite warm so quite often if people come in i'll kind of look at their scalp and if i see the scalp sort of changing color i'll just put the back of my hand on the scalp and i'll feel the heat and that is a real first early stage of of the hair kind wow. of ready to release from the scalp wow. so again feeling them kind of sensations is completely normal i mean yeah. majority of people will feel it after their second treatment you know stereotypically around about day four or five yeah obviously we're all on different paths so it may not it's be the same yeah. but it's good to know that that feeling that sensation is normal like you say if it's feeling bruised you don't know what that is does everybody else have that is this is this normal um yeah. that, it doesn't last long as you know once the hair's released and the follicles drop that feeling is going to completely stop. But there's a couple of things that we can do to kind of help soothe it and, and make it easier for you. Oh, cool, yeah. So Tell us. My first one is to always use a wise tooth comb. Is that when you've still got your hair? Yeah, so when the hair starts coming out, obviously, as you know, you'll put a, you'll put a brush through it. It's just going to keep coming. You're not yeah, necessarily yeah. going to get big bald patches or I always joke and say, you're not going to sort of look like my dad and have just this dodgy haircut. It's going to be... You know, because a lot of people get worried. They see hair loss and they think alopecia or they think male pattern baldness and we make these assumptions, but it won't. Mm. The hair will just release. Um, so by using a wide tooth comb rather than your normal brush, what it won't, if the hair starts matting or it starts, it, sometimes it will drop from the follicle and it will sit dormant here. Yeah. I see, unfortunately, a lot of that where people are too scared to brush. Yeah, I it, was. I was yeah. terrified. Do you know what I did, guys? Like I started wearing scarves to get used yeah. to seeing myself in scarves. Brilliant idea. Um, so even when I had hair, I was wearing like, I don't know if you remember some of my pictures. I had this mustard like turban style, big donut sort of um, scarf on my head. And I, I wore that every day up until even the day I shaved my hair off. 
but I could feel my hair falling out and I yeah I swear to you I couldn't even get a brush to it because I knew that that would happen yes. and eventually the day trust me the day I didn't brush my hair at all the day um I got m my husband's uncle to come and do my shaving party is the day I I finally took the scarf off and literally it was just coming yeah. out it was yeah. but I didn't cry I was laughing hysterically I was like oh my god this is so we, weird emotions are funny we don't know what we're gonna do do we yeah no, I no. thought I would cry but I didn't I was just laughing I said Matt <laughs> Matt come and look at my hair coming out oh, he was like oh my god I it was just the strangest thing because we've lost control and I think we're so used to like you said, loving our hair, doing what we want to it, whether we're going to put a colour in or straighten yeah. it. And suddenly we've lost control over something that we've had forever. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people do. They just think, I, I won't touch it. I'll leave it. It's not happening to me. Yeah, it's you denial know, and, a lot of it. Yeah, but honestly, the more you kind of say, right, I'm going to brush it. So because you get, like you say, that I will say, I call it the bird's nest effect. It's one of okay. my friends. Um, and obviously the same as you, we get lots of ladies come in, they panic and we end up cutting it out. Yeah. Um, so in hindsight we'd love to not get to that stage but everybody's yeah. but like i say we, it's, there's no right and wrong on this and I no think there that's isn't something that i always say when they say well, what do you think i should do and i say we're all on our own journey what we'll do is we're going to tell you all the tips and tricks and lots of give you lots of guidance but yeah. we'll be directed by you because we're all different that you know yeah. some ladies might say i'm getting rid of it others might not at all um mm. and i just think do what feels right and i, I can't sort of go on about that enough but with the comb, what I, I always advise is instead of starting from the top, just start from the bottom yeah. and just start brushing softly up. And then what you'll find is the hair will just start releasing. Just now, once a day, like every day, once a day? Well, or... if you're in, like you were saying, that period of it really coming out and you're not wanting to cut it, then do that quite often. But do okay. it with um, like a, this is just a conditioning spray. Okay. Or if you haven't even got a conditioning spray, even mixing your own conditioner with water obviously that helps get knots and stuff yeah, out yeah you find that the, the hair will really change because the, the nutrients aren't getting through the follicle the hair's going to go really dry and quite coarse so yeah. spraying that in if it's starting to hurt as well that would just sort of loosen it up a bit if it's starting to feel matted Good but again tip. you're not alone just get on the phone even if you don't want a wig or you're not wanting to come to us for for any yeah. of that please just call us we have ladies come in we'll cut it for you we'll support you through that yeah. um but yeah just to keep brushing brush 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 maybe brush. Uh, you said wearing a turban is awesome i always say wear a plait in your hair or maybe a couple of plaits to bed um but that's a good idea yeah because if you've got long hair i think as you probably know waking up in the morning is the emotional part i know for me a bath or a shower i used to just cry my eyes out watching it go down a plug hole and i had no control over that and yeah i remember that in the worst time and listening to stories 100 percent, that's the time um but i always recommend like a little turban toweling yeah that's a good idea someone on a group yesterday said that she went to bed with a cotton like cloth head wrap yeah uh, that so was quite secure or a silk cotton, cotton or uh, toweling are really good because they're cheap yeah. silk yeah. is amazing silk pillowcase or a silk head wrap are amazing but obviously Silk's really good for hair when it's coming back. All you're wanting to do at this time is capture the hair. So something That's right. like, if you're going to want to wash it every day, because as you know, the amount of hair that comes out, I would just pop a little towel and cap on, tuck yeah. the hair up into it, get up in the morning. And what I like to do best is just hand it, you know, when my hair, I've just shaved all mine off again, because it kind of comes and goes. That's um, it. Yeah, it's so annoying. Um, oh. But I just oh. hand it to my husband and say, can you deal with that? Because I know... That that's the part that's going to upset me the most in the day is looking at that hair that's been released in that cap. So right. sometimes it just makes it easier for us. We've controlled it a little bit more. We're not yeah. having to get up and, you know, we get up in the morning, we know it's going to be in that cap. And yeah. we can move on. I think psychologically, it just makes it a little easier for us. Yeah, to, it does. You know? I mean, I, I know some people who are very spiritual when it comes to their hair, so they wouldn't necessarily go to a hairdresser um, yeah. or a wig shop or it. It's more of a private matter where. It's Absolutely. more like um, almost, like I said, a spiritual um, ceremony, you know, with the family. Um, some people got their kids to cut yeah. their hair just because yeah. it's like such a shock, like mummy going off or and getting yeah. her hair cut and coming home completely bald or something covering. It's like because kids, they, they sort of recognize you for your hair. 
the younger they are, it's like the face suddenly, I remember my niece, she was so terrified when she saw me without hair for the first yeah. time. It's almost like she didn't recognize me and she was only two at the time. Um, and then I remember her coming to my house and I did a magic trick. Uh, I got my like wand and stuff and I said, you know, oh. your auntie can change her hair color and she can even go bald. I'm like, what color do you want me to go? And I'm like, close your eyes. And eventually ch after changing the wig a couple of times so she can see it different colors, I went bald and she's like, yeah. wow, because she thought it was a magic trick. But um, kids, I'd say if you've got children, um, maybe, you know, Get them to cut a little piece off. I know it sounds yes. crazy, but... We get um, a lot, I always advise with, if, if, to bring children into the salon, whatever age they are, because I think what's the luxury of here, we are a hair loss salon. We're not a traditional salon. Yeah. So any other client that's going to be in here has hair whether it's like me or, you know, alopecia or whether it's chemotherapy. And, I mean, I've witnessed so many amazing stories. We've got a little toy box down the front, and what we... I tend Aww. to speak to mum on the phone before, and... So look, just leave them playing, or if they're older, let them get the Wi-Fi code, let them chill out and just observe, because actually yeah. watching other people that are going through the same thing as their mum is, is amazing. Um, yeah. And that's when the questions might come. You know, I, I love it. Absolutely. I love and children don't have a filter. They'll tell you what they think. Yes, so you exactly. Can I back then? Or, you know, they come out with this stuff all the time, and it's brilliant, because there's no filter there, and they, it's great for them. They to say what they think, and um, I yes. suppose it's, it's better than being around certain adults, because all they do is give you the pity face, don't they? Yeah. Um, someone said, I've got my mum to support me after every hair wash, the highs and the lows. That's nice. It's a way of bonding, okay. and, you know, parents, they, they, they find it quite hard seeing their children going through it. Like, even as an adult woman, like my parents really struggled, you know, seeing me having my shaving party that day. Um, you know, my dad got really upset because his brother, you know, years ago passed away from um, leukemia. And uh, at the time, this is 30 years ago, you know, the treatments weren't as good um, as they are now. So he just associated it with death almost you know like losing his daughter rather than celebrating that this is you know part of the process this is colla collateral you know like um, and I could see it in my parents eyes and I, I wasn't upset the whole time until my parents came right at the end of the party and I just saw the sadness in their eyes and that nearly set me off but I just held it in um a lot of things but, that ladies do at that stage is they donate their hair as well to the little Yeah, princess. you guys do a lot to the Little Princess Trust, don't you? Yeah, we're one of their gold salons, which we're really proud of, because there's awesome. only six of us in the UK. So we get wow. some and fit all these wigs to these lovely youngsters going through treatment. Um, but I think a lot of women do it because you know that it's a bit more empowering. You're not just watching the hair yeah. grow you're then, you know it's going to somebody else and it's a really nice feeling. Um, and then what we tend to do is just put it in plaits. And like you say, if you're involved in the children, they'll cut the plaits off. So yeah. they're, they're doing the hair up. And we don't always shave it either. We, we sometimes just put it into a nice little pixie cut. You know, yeah, just to get used hand. to the, the, the stages, right? And to take the weight out maybe. Yeah. You know, we don't tend to do that until the hair starts because you still want your own identity. But when you're then yes. doing your into your wig um you you want the hair shorter i know for me god a wig well you as you know wearing a wig without hair it feels so much nicer than wearing a wig with hair anyway oh yeah completely different. so it is quite a nice stage to kind of do that but if we are buzzing we always say don't go at the first cut don't go under a grave core um, okay. and that's quite important at the beginning because the hair follicle needs to come out we need the weight on the hair yeah. So if it goes straight to the scalp, you might just end up with a few ingrown hairs, which um, we want to kind of really avoid. The most important right. thing is to really nurture that scalp because the hair's coming back, guys. It's going to be yeah. you know, coming back for you. Um, yeah. So by going to grade four, you're going to have like a little buzz cut, but it's still going to be able to drop naturally. After kind of chemo, maybe four, mm. if you've still got the odd random hairs and you want to tidy it up, go for it. Yeah. But just allowing that that um, follicle to drop and my best friend in the world I, I always talk about is coconut oil at this stage yeah uh, this is 299 from Co coca loco from aldi we're not talking top end yeah this yeah yeah organic coconut oil um like i say so i just get it from aldi i've got buckets of the stuff in here i'm always giving it away but it, just a massage on the scalp and kind of getting in the habit of doing that all the way through yeah um, because as you know it really hydrates 
skin needs to be hydrated and so does the scalp so yeah it really soothes it as well when the scalp does stop burning or like you say feels tender or bruised just by massaging it in and then popping on your little head wrap or whatever you're choosing to wear it will just soothe the scalp and it'll really cool it down um and someone just... said um let me read it out i went mm -hmm. to I, I went to a bob and then a pixie but shaving it was the best day do you yes. know what i i kind yeah. of agree i didn't i didn't yeah. do the whole stages but I yeah. just went from, you know, when it started really coming out, I'm like, it needs to go now. You know, it's yeah. matted. I, I looked like one of those mangy dogs, you know, sad little, <laughs> poor little things. Like, I had to get, I had to get rid of it. And I had flakes in there as well. I'm like, oh, yeah. yuck. But it felt strange. quite liberating. You know, I yeah. felt in control when that, I was able to worse. get it all off before yeah. the cancer, basically, like the yeah. treatment oh, took it all God. away from me. So yeah. it was really like a, a moment of taking back control. Um, before it before it all fell out because I didn't want to see it all fall out I, I yeah. thought I'd forget it I felt so good that day I got my I big hoop on. earrings on yeah. I put my bright pink lipstick <laughs> on literally the same like 10 minutes after shaving it I felt like why was I so scared yeah. I, I look all right actually but then it's, it's, it's like so some scary. people I mean, for me, I held on, I'd kind of done the classic and I held on to every single hair um, and then I started wearing hats and I think I, my ponytail ended up about this big. Um, oh. One day I just came down a bit in my hand, obviously I was really young, um, and just said to my mum, oh, I've cut my ponytail off. And I remember her thinking, oh God, are you okay? This must be awful. And I said, oh. I wish I'd done it weeks ago. I, you know, why did I hang on? You know, why did I try hanging on to that every single hair? And I'll always share that story with people. I always say, it, you're your journey don't but if i could go back and speak to my 14 year old self i'd say cut that hair off don't watch it go it was so painful yeah uh, and i think for me once it was gone i exactly the same i just felt completely different i felt much more comfortable i liked what i was looking at because i didn't have all these short bald frizzy patches um and i felt kind of started looking at myself a lot more i'm just feeling a lot more comfortable without yeah. hair on yeah and, I do, it is it's, it's such a hard time and i think until you actually experience it people are so quick to give us their opinions yeah it's only hair you'll be fine but yeah. it's, it's so scary when you're going through it and you're not knowing which what's right um but like i said everybody's got their own thing some people exactly will just get it off i can't bear to watch it and others will wait until that last minute but yeah. i think as as long as you're doing what feels comfortable i think what what doesn't help is there's so many horrible wigs around and people think that when you do get a wig, it's going to look really wiggy. Yeah, of course. But no one no. can tell that you're wearing a wig now. Yeah, thank like, you. Like, wigs are so good. Oh, like, my God. And so oh, realistic yeah. looking. I started wearing them 27 years ago, and they were not anything like they are now. Yeah. A really good one. They were itchy, they were still heavy, they were still sweaty. Um, but for me... Um, I, that's why I always say come in early because we have these connotations that a wig is going to be really dodgy, it's going to look bad. We think of we think of people that we think of in wigs, or, yeah. fancy, or fancy dress wigs, or plastic shiny or horrible stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's why I say come in early because nine times out of ten, somebody will sit in the chair, they look at themselves and go, oh. I look all right, actually. I really like that. Yeah. And then you just see their shoulders just go, oh, this is so much easier than I thought it would be. Or you, I look like me. Do you normally find that people buy more than one wig as well? Like one that looks like their own and then one like something new, almost like yeah, oh, I always advise majority, not all. I mean, like, you obviously you came in with really fun coloured hair. <laughs> you might get a feel for someone. Yeah. But certainly if someone comes in and says, look, I've had the same hairstyle for 30 years, I wouldn't even dream of saying to them, oh, let's change it up. Because yeah, exactly. It, it, confidence thing and I, I always say when I first went out wearing a wig I felt like I had this huge neon sign saying look I've got a wig on everybody and I just remember feeling so conscious of that um so my advice is always you know if you're feeling like that go for something that is really similar to you yeah. um that you're going to feel good in that nobody's going to know that you're wearing a wig it's yeah. only you and then you can control who you're telling yeah. um, and I think that's really important you don't have to walk out there and someone goes your hair looks nice I'm wearing a wig because I'm going for treatment and blue <laughs> yeah. and inside you're going to oh, look it's not talking yeah um, yeah yeah no. Um, it's nice to be able to just turn around and say, oh, thanks, yeah, I know, it. you know, God, yeah, it does. It looks really, yeah. really, I feel really good. And it builds your confidence up. I mean, crikey, my hair, my, my biological hair would never look like this. It was short, it was fine. Um, 
but once you've built your confidence up then absolutely yeah. have fun with it um so i always say get one to start with because if they're not for you don't invest and that's spend right time. we're not here to just push they're not push. cheap no and just get yourself one feel good in it and once you've worn it the second time you come to us even if it was a month later you'd be telling us what feels right what looks right what you want because you've got the feel from the inside as well as the visual yeah. I think when you first start wearing them, it's all about how it's going to look. A couple of hours even into wearing one, you're like, oh, okay. So for me, I know now 100%, obviously, but what cap construction feels right, what I need if I'm exercising, you know, all these things that we need to consider. I mean, we would do this and talk through you anyway for your initial consultation, but you'll come in the second time and you'll go, right, this is what I want, guys. Yeah. Um, and it's brilliant because you're telling us then and we'll kind of create for you. But Obviously, all being hairdressers as well, we can colour, we can cut, we can style, we can do... And pretty how, much. how long does it normally take? Like, so from, let's say, someone got diagnosed um, and they sort of left it, obviously, you've got, you've got to have time to process it and, um, and whatnot. What sort of time frame from when someone calls you to getting a wig made is, is a realistic sort of time frame for people to just re remember, you know? Yes, yeah, brilliant question, actually. Um... It, it, it can be anything because if obviously it's the appointment so if somebody wants a Saturday appointment that is our busiest so we tend to be about three four weeks in advance yeah. I have known and I will if somebody's urgent I live down the road I will come in in the evenings I will bend over backwards I, you know I'll go out my way to sort of accustom someone I would never sort of know we're not seeing you uh, I'll be here um, but obviously if you're coming before um, the hair loss begins that gives us a really great time so my advice is come as soon as possible come before hair loss starts because yeah. we'll go through all them things but also we can decide what's right for you so um we don't just make so we wouldn't necessarily make a wig for someone going through team we, we have off the peg wigs in stock so we're yeah. really fortunate we talk we work the top 11 um stockists in the world brilliant uh, wow amazing, you know i could talk for hours just about them um so we stock their wigs which are about i've probably got about six seven hundred in the salon at the moment wow but, yeah so that is from anything from a child all the way up to a large man you know it can be absolutely anybody and we have every color style everything going. Star as well yeah and then so we might find one on the day that we just trim in. It's a little fibre piece and you're like, this is me, amazing. And so it might just be the one visit. If you're wanting something a bit more custom, a bit more bespoke, so like for yourself, you'd come in, you know, you want something pink, a bit funky, you want to go human hair. Yeah. You would come in for your initial consultation. We'd look at different human hair wigs, look at the construction, um, and then we would colour it ourselves. So it's quite different colour in a wig um, because you've got lots of different types of hair. So yeah. we allow ourselves, we allow ourselves a couple of days. We do, it tends to be about a four hour process. So yeah. doing the pink and then putting in maybe a balayage or a drag root or something a bit funky. We would awesome. do it over. Yeah, so we would, and then you'd come back in, have it fit, fitted and cut, and we would teach you how to put it on. So it can be as easy as that one appointment. It could be as easy as two. It could be done in a week. And obviously done. now, because of the whole COVID situation, you guys have been doing a lot of appointments online. So in future... Yeah. People can do their appointments online, even if they yeah. live like really far away yeah. from your salon. So you yeah. guys at home can get in touch with Amanda, have a consultation via video link like this. Absolutely. Um, and she'll it show you how to measure, right, yeah. over the... Yeah, yeah, so, so you can... Measuring your head circumference. So mine, for example, is 54 centimetres. And then you would send in a photograph of your hair as well. We would photographs get... are good as well like if, if yeah, you're maybe. going in you know um and it's quite late that you've lost your hair at least you can get an idea of what um someone looked like before and you know what they want because a lot of the time i remember when i i wanted to get my first wig i wanted it exactly the same as the hair that i had on my hair like yeah. exactly the same coloring and everything i just wanted to almost like yeah i wanted my hair to come out when it needed to come out and then put it straight back on to sort of look similar so people wouldn't notice that it had gone. And 99.9% .9 of people feel the same. We're, yeah. We don't want we don't want to go out to the world when we're going through this horrendous time and go, oh, look, I've lost my hair. It's it's not time for that. It's time to feel yeah. like I feel natural. It's not like Someone, so it's, not glam. it's feeling natural and feeling like you. Someone just said, the first day after wearing my wig, I went for a walk around the town where I didn't know anyone to help build confidence that's a brilliant tip yeah. um Amazing. we've got somebody else who said uh just a moment 
let's have a look here. I get so many compliments on my hair. Everyone is so, so surprised it's a wig. Yeah, because they're, you know, they, they are so amazing. Someone said, are you guys doing more of these talks? Yes, we are every Sunday. Um, Naomi, I wish I'd have known about you. I cancelled my cons consultation somewhere else because they were so rude and really upset me. And that that's so it. true because the first yeah. place I went to, which I got my wig from actually, they were so rude as well. And I'm not going to say who it is because I've said it online in a you know different time. But they were so rude. But you know, yeah. I'm so it's glad that we know well, you. We know your personality. You know, you yeah. guys are amazing in that salon. Even we when know. I went there not to buy wig, you spent so much time just sitting and chatting to me. Well, we know that people people are nervous, and we all we all deal with nerves differently. We're not going to skip. I you know we're a hair loss salon. Yeah. We're not gonna through the door going, whoa, I'm, I'm losing my hair, I'm going to see you. You come through that door absolutely petrified. You're yeah. either very angry because you've got no control over what's happening to you, yeah. or you're really nervously excited, which would be me. I wouldn't shut up and I'd probably laugh like a hyena for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we've got the weirdest emotions running through our yeah. bodies. Yeah. You need to be able to walk through that door and someone go, Hi, are you all right? Let's sit down and have a chat. Yeah. You know, people come through and they're so overwhelmed with emotion. We just sit on the couch. We have a cup of tea. My dogs are here. They'll play with you. You know, let's Aww. just it. You know, it, that's what it's about because yeah. so many ladies have said, I was ready to jump back out that door. And I'm like, I know. That's why we had a cup of tea first. Or yeah. let's have a chat about the weather or what we watched on telly last night. Let's get into it because you, you need that support. And it's what it's about. It's not about coming here, buy the most expensive wig and let's make a fortune. If that was the case... I'd live in a mansion and, and, and <laughs> I, I don't. It's all about you feeling good. It's about what your yeah. budget is. It's about what you need right now at that time. And if you're not ready to get a wig at that day, it's cool. We'll, we'll make some notes on the consultation on our computer. Call us when you're ready. They're, we are not here to push you. We're here to guide you. And people need to remember it's all about taking back control. So you've got to enjoy it. You've got to feel empowered. Yes. Even Absolutely. if you might not, you've just got to, you've just got to base it. Um, and a lot of the time that like, I, I remember um, right at the beginning, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I was in such denial about it, but I had to just completely start to switch the way I was thinking and to start thinking, actually, Kansas not going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to look and feel my best every single day, no matter yeah. what. And yeah, and again, let's go back to what to expect because people forget about the lashes and the eyebrows as well. They're so focused yeah. on the hair. That Nine when out of ten, I end up telling people that during the consultation because they just haven't considered it or it no, hasn't. You forget planned. about that, don't you? Absolutely, and it's huge because I know for me, and it sounds really bizarre. I actually got more. I didn't lose my eyebrows and eyelashes straight away. Um, mine were quite a bit after my um, my hair loss. And I found that harder. Losing my eyelashes for me was really hard oh. because I think you just look different, you know. You yeah. can put on, but without this and knowing what to do with this, it's yeah. really, you know, even down to, I mean, I love makeup. I love playing with makeup. I love having fun with it. But I don't know if that would have come without the hair loss. I don't know if I could go back in time and have my hair there. Would, it, yeah. would I feel yeah. as confident with makeup? Because for me, it becomes... When you lose that, you, you kind of almost need to do your own identity and you want to feel attractive. You just yeah. want to feel feminine. Um, so, you know, so like I've got a little stick on lashes, but the right ones to wear. And like you say with your brows, I like quite a heavy look, but yeah. you might just want a really natural hair natural. stroke. Look. And we, and will, we will go over that in a separate episode, like going yeah. into product detail as well. But I think what we need to get um, used to is having the conversation around um, the fact that it's not just the hair on your head you start to lose your body hair as well and that's that's a bit of a shock i mean yeah. it, I, it was great for me i never had to shave yeah i love <laughs> it i'm not gonna lie i listen to the girls at work they're gonna hate me for this talking about their waxing and i'm just a bit like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> the hair loss has positives too Let's yeah go. there are some and when it starts coming back because your hormones are all over the place it's like oh this thick hair on my legs and i'm turkish as well so you can imagine like <laughs> <laughs> you know um but yeah we, we need to start talking about um the body hair loss as well uh as much as you know the the hair on the head the the eyebrows go as well you know yeah. i i loved you know what i forgot but i actually loved it when um i was having chemo because i didn't have all these hairs here yeah. because as a mediterranean person i'm super hairy like my hair comes down and like joins yeah. with my neck 
I have to use like a little, um, you know, those hair things, what are they called? <laughs> Yeah, I know. like the Holly, Holly, Hollywood razor things because I've got so many baby hairs. Like in the sunlight, it almost looks bloody blonde and bushy. But um, some people bleach it and stuff. But what, that's one thing. If you're watching now and you're about to start chemo you, and you hate this fuzz, you're going to be gone. glad. <laughs> but the, also, the thing with that, which it took me years to realize, I know now obviously you can go online and it's all there, um, putting foundation on. I never yeah. realised why it used to just congeal, but because it's not sticking to the skin or yeah. the hair, sorry, that's there, the same with anything, it's not sticking to the hair, it sort of falls down the face. Yeah. So I was sort of like, why have I got these lines? And then it, I realised well, I've got no hair. So <laughs> it's not sticking as it would normally. So then, you know, like you said, we'll go into products, but then looking at the right type of product is going to sit on your skin without hair. I mean, I haven't got any facial hair now. Yeah. Um, so I have to look and think about that when I'm putting makeup on, else it would just, it would just drop. And um, talking and about makeup, like, another thing is when you lose your hair, it's like, where do you start putting the foundation uh, and yeah. where do you stop using the foundation? Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I've been using the wrong colour foundation for all this time because it doesn't actually blend in. So yeah. I'd say if we go on to things you can do to prepare is and yeah. things you may need, is maybe looking at the shades of foundation that you're using as well because it you know you might not want to wear your wigs all the time or your scarves no. especially when you know the, the weather's quite nice you just want to be free and feel I the breeze on the back well, of your neck but around the house it's really good not to wear your wigs you know i i don't you know and i do I've, I've never gone outside about one i'm not gonna lie for me it's important for me to feel like this but yeah I think it's so good for us not to wear them. Um, a, it's going to make your wig last longer, especially if you've had a nice blow dry or, you know, it looks fantastic. But secondly, daylight, natural vitamin D is so good for our skin and our yeah. scalp. Yeah. So to actually have the wig off and have nothing on there at all is really, really good for your scalp. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Um, and when you go to bed, um, just try and sleep without it on. It would just, it's just so much nicer for your skin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wearing them all the time. You know, I have this little analogy that if we had a plant and we popped it in a, in a cupboard, it's not going to grow. And, you know, it's, it's going to be the same with wearing your wig all the time. When your chemotherapy stops, yeah. if we wear the wear wig less at home and we've got the day, natural day, I'm not saying expose yourself to daylight, but just like I am now, the window light's coming through. It's so good for your scalp. Yeah, it is. So it get, is. Get the daylight to it and then and you kind of embrace it if you can. It, it's, I'm not saying that's easy, but yeah. it definitely helps. It just it really helps the regrowth when it's on Do its Do you know what as well? Like, I, I, as a lot of you guys know, I rock the bald. I wore wigs and stuff. I wore my scarves, but I quite liked when I didn't, when I didn't wear my wigs and I did rock the bald, I spent quite a bit on accessories like sunglasses, earrings, yeah. and really made a statement with my with my hair. Even when I wore my wig, I tried to always have a statement about it, even if yeah, it looked right. quite wiggy because not everyone has blue hair. But I did get stopped a couple of times, and people are like, "I love your hair. How did you bleach it?" You look it? fantastic. You did and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I, I it's a, you know my hairdresser did it. I don't know. <laughs> it was just a wig." Um, yeah. people can tell and again like you said it's sometimes it's actually better wearing your wig um without even a wig cap on underneath yeah. because I it's um know. i've got a little bit of tape on mine so you can see it's, if i pull it's it so it's going uh, I've got a tiny little bit of tape on, but we would definitely talk you through that as well on what to wear wig caps when you haven't got hair. I can't stand yeah. them. Um, it's different when you know, we would go through all that with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. different ways of wearing one, which you know, is another. Everyone, oh, can't wear a wig, it's going to fall off. Or I like doing yoga, or I want to go running. That's cool, we, we can do all that. Yeah. Um, your life's not going to stop here just because your hair's gone. We'll get, we'll exactly. talk you through how to just it's got to become part of you your life isn't suddenly absolutely going to be walking in the therapy let's make it become part of you but just knowing how to manage it i think once you've got them key skills and that knowledge you're owning it you are you know like we were saying you're in control let let yourself be in control of it don't let it control you yes and once you've 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 smashed that you've got it you're there all day long you know and your confidence was showing. I mean, for me, just putting the right wig on somebody, they could have come in and they're a bit nervous. And you put them there suddenly, whoa, and they're walking around the salon, looking all different mirrors. Like, oh, I look really good. Yeah. I love it. It just, it just fills me up so much. You know, it's so positive. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, it is a feeling that, you know, you, you, you think that you're not going to get to. You think that, you know, oh, God, I'm going to lose my hair. I'm going to feel like this. But actually, when you put a wig on, that makes you feel amazing. That feeling, I can't even describe it to people. Yeah. 
it's almost like I'm so glad I did decide to have chemo because like um, if anyone tuned in the other day, um, Claire Paxman was saying about um, that there's 10% of people who, you know, they refuse chemo because of hair loss. And, you know, to think that there's still people out there that are refusing just because they're going to lose their hair is so upsetting. Um, but I've given just... a lot of time things like I found it harder losing my hair than I did my breasts. Yeah, think, you know, and a lot of people have so much guilt with that as well. But it we it, it is what exposes us, and you, I completely understand that the fear of of suddenly having to have that change, and there is so much guilt associated with it, and it's so sad to think that that we live in 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 this society that as a woman we we suddenly feel this this guilt and like i say to, to, i'm more concerned about this than i was i can conceal my breasts like what am i going to do um and a lot of my advice again that's why i say always come in early even if you're in fear of maybe i don't know if i want this chemotherapy i don't know if i want to go on this journey yeah. come in and try a couple of weeks on just yeah and speak to the experts because you know like they are out there and you will feel amazing um and it, despite good, what's you know, going on look at the good wig companies look at the nhs suppliers i'm not sitting here saying it's just me that any wig yeah. company is an nhs supplier are going to be a high quality wig salon they're going to be dedicated to hair loss i promise you there's they're amazing you're not going to yeah. come out from as you know some dodgy looking wig and feel go up a completely different person yeah. our aim is to make you feel like you and if we can a better version of you then we're home and dry and everyone you know you're feeling good and then building yourself up to wearing it like lady said going down the street walking down the street and wearing it amazing i always say the first time you get it go out for afternoon tea or meet a friend in the park or just something really basic maybe somewhere that you don't live yeah. and just wear it for a few hours at a time and yeah. build your coffee. don't leave it in that box under your bed with your eyes burning a hole in it and think i've got to wear that and i'm really scared to just start start straight away and do you know what like okay. I, even when going for dog walks i i wore my wig and i put a nice woolly hat and i felt so like all saints <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like music <laughs> video like i felt awesome my hair was perfect yeah. and i had this woolly hat on but it was it was nice because sometimes i was self-conscious about um the parting um yeah. and the lace and stuff it's like when it needed to be washed it's like oh god i haven't washed it yet and it's got a bit of build up of products i used to put um a bit of makeup on there to like make it look a bit lighter the lace um but i'd plonk a hat on um and it was yeah. fine um but we've got t about 10 minutes left if anyone wants to submit some questions um but let let's move on to the final thing because like i said we've only got less than 10 minutes left now before the in instagram book decides to cut us off what would you say um you will need to buy in preparation so we talked about the comb the leave yeah. conditioner yeah so the comb is number one. that is 100 percent number one be, like, ours are hair loss combs but you know like an afro comb a wide tooth comb anything like that that's going to be much better for your hair to to, it will glide through it's not going to get stuck um yeah. and it's going to stop it matting my best friend coconut oil is awesome like i say this is just coconut i've just sat in actually Ch um, chuck a out. bit in the pan chuck a bit on your yeah, hair yeah it's the best. i use it for everything honestly I, I, <laughs> yeah. we do do another one if the scalp does get a bit sore we work with insight and this one is actually aloe vera based oh, cool. um, and that's a really good one so if the scalp goes past the stage of thinking it doesn't for everyone that's why i would never say you must buy everything i say yeah. start basic. always start basic don't don't waste your money exactly don't look where it's going don't and exactly. that's like, not here for that um i wouldn't sell this because i know it's two pounds in aldi i would sell this because i know it's a salon only product and i know yeah. that it's but maybe the next stage if the scalp is feeling super tender that we can go down this route um do you have that but, on your yeah. website as well <laughs> Yeah, that's on our website. What it's is it called? Salon. Bring um, it close up. It's called Insight Scalp Comfort Cream. Okay, cool. Just so everyone right. knows. So it's, it's really nice. I stupidly burnt my scalp last week in the sun. Uh, tell everyone not to. And I sat out in the sun. I burnt my scalp. And <laughs> my little savior. Um, oh. It was brilliant. So, um, yeah, if it gets worse, we do have other products as well. Awesome. Um, like I say, using a coconut, um, sorry. A Leaving conditioner. conditioner. If the, if the hair feels dry as it's coming out. Okay. Uh, they're probably my best products. A question that I get asked a lot is, well, what should I change my shampoo? Do I go, I mean, we do our own products as well that are pulp, parapane, sulfate, silicone free. These are fantastic. Yeah. Don't buy anything prior to hair loss unless you're using the cold cap. Completely yeah. different. These are the sort of products you want. But if you know that the hair's going to go, my advice is please don't change your 
products that are your shampoos and conditioners. And the main reason is your scalp, your body does become hypersensitive through chemotherapy. Yeah. So if we suddenly start adding more perfumes or something that maybe has an allergen in, it's, it can make your scalp different. So stick to what your body is used to using. Do not change. Don't use baby shampoo. Baby shampoo is not what we're after. Just use what you normally use. Um, oh, really? Some people yeah. say to use baby shampoo, but don't. No. But absolutely not. Baby shampoo isn't great for hair loss. Um, it, I've, I personally don't like it at all. I've never used it on my own children. Um, it's all about what's in the back and the ingredients. I mean, obviously, if you're already using a really good organic shampoo or yeah. conditioner, um, but don't, it's not the time to change. Nothing is going to stop this hair falling out, unfortunately. You yeah. know, I, I thought, oh, because of my, you know, strong Turkish roots, you know, my thick hair, I'm not going to lose my hair, but even chemo, like, I, I thought, you know, I'd, uh, what what they call it, um, out, out, uh, what's the word? Oh, God. Anyway, modern medicine. I was like, yeah, my Turkish roots, I'm not going to lose any of my hair. <laughs> Obviously, all of it went. <laughs> yeah. But I think just using, like I say, don't go crazy. A lot of people will say, well, if I use hair loss products, you know, if I use the caffeine shampoo, if I use the Regain, it won't go. It will because it's internal. They, yeah. Then products will work once the follicles regrown. You know, there's so many products on the market that arguably do work, but they only work when the follicle's there. The follicle's mm -hmm. coming out. We need to just nurture the scalp. We need to make sure we're brushing. We keep it basic. Don't worry about going out and spending a fortune on products that aren't going to change that. Just a really nice condition. If you want to buy anything, a conditioning spray just to stop the hair from matting yeah. is key. But like I say, everything else, just continue with what you're using um, and you can't really go wrong. Cool. As someone, uh, Naomi just said, the thing, uh, the one thing chemo didn't get rid of was my super hairy arm. <laughs> Do you know what? You got rid of mine. I was like, oh my God, my Turkish arm hair has gone. <laughs> Actually, that's really frustrating. Like, you want it all to go, and then you get to keep your arms. Mine was my toes. Mine had a hairy toe, and I could never figure it out. <laughs> oh like, not one hair on my body, but I'm left with these, like, toes. I was like, why? Why have you done that to me? <laughs> oh, my God. That's mad. <laughs> I would also say, if you're going to buy anything, um, try and get, like, the little um, brow, like, powder and stuff, because the brows, actually, for me, the brows fell out, like, last yeah, they do. I brows kept are, my brows throughout. They thinned out quite a bit. I yeah. mean, if you if you have got the time, which we'll talk about again on another yeah. series uh, episode, is um, doing microblading if you've got the yeah. time beforehand. Yeah. Because the second time um, I was diagnosed, I had, again, I had that slot. So I went and got my eyebrows microbladed yeah. the second time around, and it made the world of difference. Just it's having really a guide. Say, get them done before the hair loss starts. Because yeah. even once the eyebrows fall out, you, you won't know the hair's necessarily gone because they're so natural. The hair strokes yes. are insane, you know? Um, so go and get them done. Again, not everyone can, can um, no. but if you can... We will always give a free consultation and give you a Q&A. We'll always go through the medical history and everything you need to know. And if it wasn't right for you, we would actually say, we don't think it's right for you at the moment, or there be, might be a reason. But it, it definitely does give you more confidence. So a lot of people... Um, come in and get it done a lot of ladies will come in get to that stage where they'll actually get their wig at the same time as their top up so their second appointment yeah. and then they have their wig fitted maybe their hair cut and get new brows and they're like whoa i'm going out this new woman and i always say do something nice like go for lunch with a friend afterwards do something yeah. really positive, all this yeah. great energy. um 100%. yeah so it's great to be prepared for that definitely so it's saying we've got one minute and 50 seconds remaining. So if there's no other questions, next week um, we're going to be talking all about buying and choosing your first wig. Mm. We're going to go into more detail about sort of what what you should look for because it is overwhelming, isn't it? Especially for people oh, who yeah. have never even touched the wig before. It's like, where the hell do you start? Absolutely. So, even, probably even more scarier now, 100% than when I first went through it all them years ago because we've got the internet and everybody's got their opinions and exactly. there's so many people out there. And but to hear it from an expert like yourself, yeah. who is not only a wig wearer herself, but deals with patients daily, you know, not just yeah, any, true. anyone off the street who's like, Oh, I want to go pink today. Even though you said you do deal with a lot of people who think you just sell wigs willy nilly, like yeah. it's a party yeah. shop. Um, we've got an expert. So if you guys yeah. want to get your questions me. in, um beforehand i will again i will have the um box available for for questions but next week it's all about choosing your first um wig 
Do you help for non-European hair wigs? Yes. Absolutely, we do. We do wigs for everybody. So we, um, you name it, we've got a Nigerian supplier who is amazing. She makes them herself um, in Nigeria and she sends them over. So they're sort of semi-custom. Um, we but we'll do... go over all of that next week. Yeah, we've got 28 all... seconds <laughs> remaining and I don't want to get cut off in the middle of no. you talking, but... Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Honestly, yeah. um, some of your feedback and advice has been amazing. And please tune in next week. Um, this is about sharing advice and support with everyone. So we want you to get involved in the conversation. So I'm going to say thank adios. You. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been brilliant. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.